Hello everybody and welcome to Spindle TV. Good to be back. Glad to see you all here. Thanks for jumping in and joining me tonight. Let me set that aside. Wet my whistle. Well, last week, uh, or the week before last, before uh, I, I had to go on the road, um, I talked about doing a video with some tips and tricks and stuff, and uh, I thought that was going to be this video, uh, but version 11 has just been released uh, with the Vetric software, and with that, a lot of people are doing updates and everything, and uh, with those updates, there's been a lot of questions for me with Digital Woodcarver customers and things like that. Uh, so I'd like to be able to discuss some of the new features in uh, version 11 and kind of show off. I mean, man, Vetric really outdid them themselves this time with uh, the updates uh, and um, uh, some pretty cool features. Now, I haven't gotten all of my updates yet for all of my software. I've only gotten it for Aspire. I have to wait a, a few days before I get uh, vCard Pro and Desktop. But the, uh, a lot of the features that uh, have been upgraded in Desktop and Pro are also part of Aspire 2. So I'm going to be in Aspire tonight uh, and uh, talking about these updates and everything. And um, we'll talk about uh, what is, uh, is not you know, in a, uh, a vCard Pro or Desktop feature when that time comes and all. But you'll notice that <clears throat> when we switch over that uh, I'll be an Aspire, but it's because I haven't gotten my Pro or my desktop uh, 11 version update yet. And we'll go from there. Hopefully you guys and girls are all doing well. And uh, we'll, um, you know, we'll get through this very simply and everything. Uh, <clears throat> and as I said, Man, what a game changer on a lot of these uh, new features and updates. If you haven't updated to version 11, uh, definitely you know keep an eye out of what we're going to be talking about tonight. I'm not going to, you know, it just came out the other day when I got back from Tennessee. I had to drive up to Tennessee and Indiana and drive back. But uh, I haven't had a chance to play with all the features yet. I've had a chance to play with some of them. Uh, but uh, some amazing stuff. Um let's go ahead and switch over the uh, camera let me see here I can't remember what camera that is is it camera two camera two I believe I don't have my preview screen uh, anymore right now the volume is screwed up and it's making the mic do a massive feedback and stuff so I really don't have uh, that uh, done yet so bear with me a second all right I'm gonna go mute for a minute Okay, for some reason my uh, monitor volume has gotten cranked up to 100. I can't get it to turn back down. And when my microphone gets turned on, massive feedback and stuff. So I don't have my little preview screen so I can see what you guys and girls are seeing uh, and, uh, and everything. So it took a second. I had to turn my microphone off just to be able to do that. All right, so some of the uh, new features uh, that we're going to be talking about um, are going to be basically uh, very useful. Number one, the one thing you may notice or may have noticed when you updated, if you did upgrade to version 11, uh, it is now, uh, you know, you have a way of configuring a machine, choosing a machine from a list, and then it kind of preloading some preset features. I don't know how many OEMs, how many uh, you know uh, original uh, equipment manufacturers, you know distributors such as ourselves and all that, that deal with Vetric and all. Uh, I don't know how many of them participated in providing the updated post processors, the tool database, the different models of the machines and everything, so Vetric can put all those in, all that information into the version 11. But now you have the ability 
when you are uh, setting up uh, your Vetric software and your tool database and what have you, you have the ability to configure a new machine um, and uh, the post processor for that machine, the tool database and everything like that. Um, when you go to configure, you can choose uh, from a list, you can download them, you can search online for your machine, you can add them, you know, uh, add a machine, like if, if they didn't, if one of the vendors didn't submit their information, you can kind of build your own information and things. Uh, so it's, it's kind of pretty cool because when you uh, choose, you know, from your list, uh, you have the ability to, it'll load all the proper post processors for that machine. It'll load the tool database for that machine. And we have our mini carver, we have our 2440, we have our four by four machine, our four by eight. And so each of those machines, they're kind of configured differently. The tool databases are different and everything like that. And um, we can load them. So the, uh, let me bear with me a second. Let me download my uh, manufacturer. So from the list, I mean, there's tools, uh, companies such as Avid, Axiom, Bob CNC, Cam Master, Carbide 3D, Digital Wood Carver, a generic brand, uh, you know, that you can use, Laguna, Legacy, Next Wave, Onefinity, Uznet, ShopBot, and ShopSaver, right? And so when you uh, choose these configurations, you can choose the different models uh, and everything and in this case, I'm gonna set up the 2440, and we can you know, uh, set up for our laser mode and the rotary axis and everything, uh, or it could just be the default where it's just an X, Y, Z, and you don't have a rotary or you don't have the laser module or anything like that. Uh, in my case, the 2440 has all three, and so I can choose those, and I can download uh, those configurations. Uh, so, we, uh, you know, I've installed the uh, successful configurations and it'll load the associated post processors uh, with that. And uh, at the post processors, it'll say V1 version one, kind of that's what's the standard. But if I, uh, from Digital Woodcarver, sent Vetric an update to the post processors or sent Vetric an update to the tool database, uh, or what have you, then they will incorporate that into the next updates and all. And then when it comes in, you'll see V2, version two of that post processor, or version three, so on and so forth. Uh, so it's really nice to be able to uh, associate, you know, your controller software and everything, your machine size and stuff uh, when you're doing that setup. So you can come through and, you know, choose the appropriate. Now, some companies have uh, custom post processors and stuff, or you might have even added some custom post processors, uh, you know, for doing a laser engraving on a rotary axis, or uh, you might have set up a post processor that uh, it, you um, are removing the Z movements out where, you know, it's a tool or something uh, that uh, there's no up and down Z movements and you, you've edited their, the company post processor to your own specific needs you can add those in as well. Under the file application data folder, we have folders such as my post P and everything with, uh, you know, that could be your custom post processor list and things like that uh, and stuff that you may have in there. Um, well, if you notice associated with the 2440, it shows only two of the main post processors that Vetra put in, but I can add additional post processors. So I can come into this list again, and I can come in and add all of my custom post processors. So I want this one, uh, the ATC Tool Changer. Uh, let's see here, and that one, let's turn that one off, I don't want that one and I could select those and add them to the list and apply them so that way they're in my list as well. Some of you may have, you know, a, um, 
a special post processor because you have different attachments for your CNC. You know, your CNC, hell, I don't know, it could convert into a plasma cutter or whatever. And you, you know, the default CNC machine, you know, doesn't have that post processor and everything, but you have one for when you put the uh, plasma head on and put your water bed on or whatever, if it's convertible and stuff like that. And uh, you can add that post processor. So that's pretty cool that you can set up the machine now for all your specific uh, needs and stuff. And uh, it'll automatically auto configure your particular design and stuff. So that's just kind of the some of the technical stuff as far as when you first download it, it's gonna ask you if you wanna skip or if you wanna configure your machine, right? And if you have a DIY CNC where you built your own, you know, uh, from a kit, uh, it could have been from, you know, like a, a, a Dave Gatton CNC type of thing and stuff like that. And you have post processors that, you know, work with that. You can add those into that list and you can build the configuration for that. It's, it's pretty cool stuff and, um, uh, and all. But let's get into the fun features and everything. Number one, you guys and girls have seen me create projects where we might have been doing a box or something. And, um, you know, I might have the front side and the two backs carving out of one board, but the lid would be carving out of another panel, uh, another board, or, or, you know, the feet carved out of another board, whatever the case may be. You've seen me where I've told you at the end that I'll move things around before I release the files and create the different files for the different size sheets. Well, now we can create those different sheets in one project. We can add custom sheets, and I love the fact that we can do that now, that on our tabs over on the left, we have a sheet tab, and currently right now I have one sheet that's 24 by 32 by inch and a half, but I can add in new material. So if I have my uh, sheet two, I'll name that to my, uh, let's just for instance call this my lid board or what have you. I can then come in and uh, edit that and change that sheet size. So let's say that I'm gonna be cutting that lid out of a uh, 12 inch wide by nine inch uh, tall by, I don't know, three quarters, just as an example. Uh, and uh, I'll be touching off on the material surface starting in the bottom left corner. I can go ahead and click OK and I can add that sheet in. And now, um, you know, I have sheet one, which is my main sheet over here, my th uh, 24 by 36, and then my lid board is here. Uh, and uh, let's go ahead and make this one active. Uh, let's rename it. We'll just call this uh, my main board just for right now and everything. And so, uh, in that sheet, I can, uh, let's go to my toolpath view. Uh, I can create the toolpaths for, I can choose what sheet that I'm creating that toolpath for, whether it be my main board toolpath or my lid board toolpath that I'm creating. And it's just, Phenomenal. Now I can, in one project, if I have multiple parts getting cut out of multiple boards, and those boards are different size and dimension, I don't have to create a project for that one by six. I don't have to create a project for that four by four. I don't have to create a project for this and that. It can all be nice and organized in one project on those different sheets, my vectors and the, the things, and I can create my tool pass on those different sheets. I love that fact because in the past, and we've done it in classes and stuff, you know, I'm gonna be creating a project and my inlay, my mail inlay might be getting cut out of a eighth inch, you know, six by six or something like that. Or my, you know, this and that could be carved out of another board, whatever it may be. I can now set up all those sheets and keep that project nice and contained and organized. Awesome, awesome feature. Um, I can choose, uh, you know, uh, what sheets happen to be active so I can create my tool pass and everything on them uh, and, uh, you know, work with them and stuff. It's just, it's just great. Uh, so that is a big game changer. 
uh, and everything that I can lay out my entire project in one session, let's call it a session, and um, you know, just have everything you know laid out on the boards that they're going to get cut. I can create the tool paths for those separate boards. They have their own, you know, X, Y origin or touch off, depending on, you know, I might be touching off on the material surface on one board, but the machine bed on the other because I'm going to be milling that entire surface. Off. Whatever the case may be, the scenario that you can, can imagine, we can now do by separating those sheets and we can keep it all contained where we don't lose files like, oh shoot, I got one, you know, one board for the lid on in one project, I got to open it up. And then I got to open up another project for the body. And then I got to open up another project for the feet. No more of that. We can now, you know, uh, uh, organize this all together. And that's Desktop Pro and Aspire all across the board. Okay. So the new addition of the sheets is a thumbs up for me with regards to that. Uh, it's absolutely uh, amazing. Uh, the second feature, and let's go back over here and let's draw in uh, a, uh, a shape here. And I'm gonna draw in uh, one and a half inch wide slots that are uh, 0 0.5 inches thick. And I'm going to copy that in multiple places. I'm gonna hold down the control key and let's throw one over here, one over here, one here, one here. Now, a lot of times we are making kits and stuff. We're cutting out parts that we're gonna be assembling. We have you know, little tenons and mortises that the parts are gonna be fitting into. Uh, we could have a drill pattern or a drilling you know, type tool path, whatever it may be. And if anything changed uh, in our project, uh, you know, such as our material thickness or our drill size, you know, I need to use a smaller dowel then the three eighths, I need to go down to a quarter of an inch or whatever the case may be. Let me throw some circles in here to, uh, uh, let's go with a diameter of 0.375 and let me throw in some little uh, marks here. The one thing I love is if every, if anything had to change, you know, before, uh, if I had to go in and change my dowel size or my slot size because my material varies or what have you, Let's say I imported a project where everything was set up for a half inch thick board, but I'm going to be cutting it out of plywood. And, uh, you know, it's going to be 15, 30 seconds versus, you know, the half inch. Because uh, plywood is, you know, you know, commonly, you know, slightly smaller uh, and, and stuff. Um, now I can go in and, and change my slots all at once. So if I come in and select all of my slots here, one by one, Okay, and I go to my size tool, I now have the ability to scale my selection, the whole thing at one time, right? Uh, you know, if I'm sizing it down or up, like a normal sizing that you would do on an everyday situation. But I also now have the new feature to scale the selected items individually. So now I can come in here and change my slot size I still want to keep my half inch, you know, one and a half inch long, but I want to change my height. And I want to go 15, 30 seconds, you know, which is 0 0.46875. I can now apply that and change all of them at one time. And so uh, once that is, you know, once they are sized and everything, if we go look, you know, they've all been resized to that 0 0.4687 or 0 0.4688, it rounds it up. But uh, let's do something a little bit more dramatic so we can actually see here. Let's come in here and let's say that we are gonna be, you know, cutting these out of a eighth inch thick board. So we'll go uh, point 0.125, scale all the items individually. And uh, you know, now all the slots are, you know, resized for that half inch thick material or eighth inch thick material. I love this feature. I love this feature for the simple fact that if you've ever purchased something from design, not design to make, from uh, make CNC, those kits of, you know, those different airplanes and animals and houses and all this kind of stuff, train sets and all, they're all the vectors are already pre-done for you, but you have to go in and size the uh, material and the slots and everything for the size material that you're working with. If I was cutting it out of hardwood for an eighth inch job, you know, I import the eighth inch file, but if I'm cutting it out of plywood, then I'm gonna be, you know, seven thirty seconds and stuff. 
Um, this is a, is it 7.30 seconds? I think it's 7.30 seconds. But, um, you know, this is a game changer. Just like my slots, you know, if I had three eighths inch holes and I need to go through and change them all to, uh, to be a quarter of an inch size or an uh, eighth of an inch size, oops, 0.25 and uh, click apply. I can size them all individually. Wonderful. Love that. So that's a new feature in the size tool, right? So we can size multiple things individually, or we can still, you know, like we normally do our normal scale selection, we can now size that whole selection down to whatever it may be, you know, as, as a whole, right? And so amazing uh, little feature that just makes a big game changer. All right, so let's stop for a minute. Let's see what kind of questions you guys have. Uh, rest machining, Bruce Stanford said. Please, 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 rest machining. Um, we're gonna talk about that coming up here in just a few minutes, Bruce, so hang tight for that one. Uh, and uh, let's see here, from 101 Virtual Training, are you really for Aspire version 11 or should we wait to make an appointment? Stand by, Harvey, let me see here. For the one-on-one -on -one virtual, training are you really I'm, I'm assuming you mean are you ready for the aspire version 11 or should we wait to make an appointment um i think you meant ready uh for our one-on-one -on -one, you know training sessions and stuff you do your training with me i'll show you exactly what needs to do uh don't you worry about that i'll um if you, even if you ca ca called me tomorrow and didn't schedule a one-on-one -on -one session on, you know, you want to learn about the new stuff in your version 11, I'll be ready. You don't have to worry about that at all. That's that's what my job is, to, to be the instructor, to know all the ins and outs. I haven't studied everything thoroughly and everything, but uh, from the, uh, you know, few hours that I did, uh, I got a pretty good hang of it already. Um, let's see here. So don't worry about that, Harvey. Uh, I am ready, if that's what you were asking. Uh, layers are separate for each sheet, question mark. So are the layers, you know, when we create layers, let's go into our layers tool path. When we create layers, are those layers separated for each sheet that we create? And the question of that, or the uh, answer to that is, um, the short answer is it's no, the layers right now are still kind of all together. So if I had, uh, let's see, all of these are on layer one. And if I took some of these, and cut them from here. And then I go over to my lid board and I paste them here and let's drop them on there. Those items are still on layer one, okay? So they're not separate. So you're gonna have to, on your layers, you're gonna have to, when you separate, when you have things separated, you're gonna to have to name your layers appropriately, you know, sheet one, you know, uh, outline vectors or border vectors, uh, lid board, outline vectors, or border vectors, whatever it may be, right? So, because those layers are still associated all together. So those items are still, so you're gonna to have to do that little bit of work uh, as far as uh, separating your vectors and, and, and organizing your layers, okay? I'm assuming that at some point in time, now that they've made this change, we're act adding new sheets, uh, that'll probably be an iteration that comes out where they will, uh, you'll be able to sh select a particular sheet and you'll be able to select, uh, you know, create vectors under that sheet and group it and stuff. Uh, but currently right now, um, they are, uh, it, the layers you're gonna name and separate separately. The, uh, let's see here, um, ba -ba -ba -ba. VCAR Pro, yep, Pro and uh, Desktop have, everything that I've gone over so far, Pro and Desktop have, uh, you know, the same sizing feature, the same, you know, uh, sheet setup and all that stuff. So everything I'm talking about, guys, even though I'm working in Aspire, like my little preliminary warning at the beginning, it's the same stuff. I'll tell you when it's just an Aspire feature. Okay, I'll let you know when it's just an Aspire feature, but right now everything that I'm talking about is Aspire, Desktop, and uh, Pro. 
Okay, cool beans. Uh, let's see here. Um, okay. As far as updates now, if you're if you're new to the Vetric software and everything, you get one year of updates. So if version 11 falls in that year, it'll be a free update for you. Uh, if you're past that year, you can buy the next year of updates. Uh, I, I don't think the prices have changed on that. Desktop, it's $90. VCar Pro, $175. And Aspire, $400. Okay. Cool beans. Uh, and uh, hello, Steve S. Uh, thanks for joining us and all. Um, you get free update for the first year. Yes, you do get free updates for the first year. And then after that, you purchase your updates for the next year and things and all. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Let's get rid of this for a minute. Let's talk about a simple but uh, effective new little add-on for the polyline tool. We now have a, uh, a method to undo uh, which is the uh, sh keyboard shortcut for backspacing and stuff like it's our backspace uh, is our keyboard shortcut which we didn't have before so if you're drawing a line segment whatever the case may be and you need to you, you did it wrong you need to uh, you know back up you can hit your backspace bar uh, to get back to you know where you uh, you know needed to backspace to right so that is uh, before we would have to go to either undo over here or we'd have to, you know, stop the line and undo what we did and redo it and all that good stuff and, and everything. But uh, now with the polyline tool, when you are, you know, drawing, you can backspace out of it with your backspace key. You know, you can backspace each of those line segments to get, you know, where you needed to be so that you can clean up your shape and uh, and all that good stuff. So that's a nice little feature, the backspace button, uh, being able to backspace and all out of it. Okay, so uh, simple little things uh, like that that are, you know, that are great uh, and, and all. Um, Let's get into, uh, really quickly, we are going to get into an Aspire feature really quickly. Uh, we're going to jump ahead for a minute to an Aspire feature. And uh, in Aspire, when you're modeling and stuff, we now have the ability when we're doing sculpting, you know, which when we were sculpting before, we could... Uh, you know, smooth things out, we could smudge things over, we could add material, we could take away material and stuff. Well, now we can add custom brushes. So custom brushes and features that have uh, kind of a texture to them or a design or what have you. Now, I am very much used to this feature from my ZBrush, uh, which is a powerful uh, sculpting and modeling program uh, and uh, in my ZBrush, I can set up custom brushes that when I click, you know, it, it adds that feature on and stuff like that. Uh, I am so happy to see Vetric Aspire add this feature. Let me give you an example of this uh, and where this would come in useful. So I'm going to come in and uh, I'm going to draw a rectangle here. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to uh, go into the modeling tools and I'm going to create a shape. I'm going to create a domed shape. We'll talk about the new shape tool in just a minute, but let's talk about a dome shape here. And I'm going to go uh, for this dome shape. I'm going to go, let's go 60 degrees uh, and uh, no base height. Let's split the view so you all can see what's uh, happening here. Okay, let's kind of zoom into this. All right, and I want no limit. I want a nice round uh, log there, almost kind of, right? Okay, great, wonderful. Uh, let's go ahead and close that for a moment. And let's go into my rectangle tool again. And I wanna draw a rectangle here. 
And I want to draw a line. Let me find the middle of my part. Let's draw a line there. And I want to take that rectangle and I want to flip it about that line. So mirror and flip it about the line. Oh, make a mirror copy. Let's do that again. I want a mirror copy. A little bit about the line. There we go. All right, cool beans. And then I'm going to take another rectangle and I'm going to throw it right here. And I'm going to make sure that that's centered left and right. All right, first thing I want to do in my modeling tab is I want to take my model and I want to take these two vectors here. Let's group them together. I want them to be grouped together. But I want to select my model here with those vectors and I want to clear everything inside those vectors away. I want to cut the ends off, right? So I got a nice round uh, kind of log, if you will. All right, cool. Uh, on this rectangle here, I want to go ahead and create another shape. It's going to be just a flat profile. I'm going to go down about, uh, I don't know, let's go 0.2 inches down and I want to subtract it from the top of this log. All right, let's click apply and subtract it from the top. And I actually want to merge that down. All right, to kind of create that flat. So you can see that kind of flat profile there, right? Now, now, I want to go, I'm going to select my log here and I want to go into my sculpting tool. And you get to get you started uh, with the Vetric. They've already given you some preloaded brushes. Let's take a look at uh, what those preloaded brushes are. So it's called a component brush. Use a component brush, and I can load any brush that I've created or that, uh, that, that already comes with it. So let's load a brush. And the brush is located in our sculpting brushes folders. We got things like bark, clouds, cracks, fine feathers, footprints, left and right, uh, gravel, uh, grass, grid, uh, oval, pyramid, sample mountain, which I created earlier, uh, sand, uh, seagulls, and things like that, zigzag and water and all this stuff. I'm going to go with a bark look here, my bark brush. And on my bark brush, I've got my bark brush in there. I'll go with kind of a medium uh, strength, medium size here. And I want to flip it. I want to rotate it 90 degrees. There we go. And uh, let's uh, twiddle the view first because I want to really zoom into this. And let's go maximum view here. Uh, let's get this uh, pulled up and zoom really into it. And I'll, now notice that I'm only working on the log part, not the flat part that I took out, just the log part and everything. Uh, so let's go back to uh, the deposit material, my custom brush and everything. And now I can come in here and I can click to add bark uh, to this log to give it kind of a, you know, custom wood look. Let's get that bark added in there. Now I can uh, click uh, and everything to get that uh, nice log look going on with that custom brush. I could take that brush and hold down my left mouse button and smear across right if I wanted to build up stuff, but I don't want to build up stuff. So let's undo that. Uh, let me go in there and undo that. All right, and let's go back and put that uh, bark back in there. Okay. Uh, it's nice that it kind of layers that uh, when I overlap the brush uh, and everything and I could change the intensity and all uh, to get that nice log look, right? Love that feature. Um, let's go ahead and click OK. All right, and notice that uh, my little flat spot come in and right, it took that part of that log away. So now I could do something uh, like I could come in here and let's go into my clip art and let's go in my clip art here. Let's grab an animal. Let's grab our little Canadian goose. Let's throw that guy in there and uh, let's get him sized down and let's get him moved up. 
All right, on my Canadian Goose, let's go back to our modeling tab. On the Canadian Goose, I wanna change the combine mode to a, a merge, and I wanna give it a little bit of body height, or I might wanna give it some tilt or fade or what have you uh, and stuff, but I want him kind of above. Let's go a little bit more. I think it needs to be about a half inch and all. And uh, let's move him up here and now I'm going to tilt them a little bit so the wing is above the log so I'm going to add a little bit of tilt in here let's go here and do a little tilt I want to tilt uh, in this direction from here let's hit the set button that would help from here to here and uh, let's zoom back into that All right, let's give that a little bit of tilt. Let's go kind of maybe two degrees, a little bit more. Great. All right, and uh, you know, I can start building this cool little scenery and everything now uh, and stuff on this log, you know, with this kind of cutout. If I wanted to throw some uh, mountains in the background, I could, uh, and let's, uh, Let's do this real quick. Let me draw another rectangle. And let me create a shape of that rectangle. So it's just gonna be a flat shape and I'm gonna go, I don't know, quarter of an inch. And click apply to build that model. All right, let's uh, go up here to this for a minute. And on that component let's go into our sculpting again and this time let's go into our sculpting brush and I'll add some footprints uh, we'll do the left footprints uh, and uh, you know I could add footprints here let's go in now and select our right footprints Throw that in there, that in there. You know, I could add all kinds of neat features, right? Um, I could also add or create my own brush. So if I, oops, let's go in and uh, let's go in and grab my sample mountains here. I created some mountains, just uh, traced a vector of uh, some mountains and. Uh, you know, I can come in here and add the, that mountain range into the back of my board. Uh, let's twiddle that view so we can zoom in. Oops. Zoom in. So I can add that mountain range. I don't have the, I don't, I don't have the resolution turned up so it's a little pixelated. Uh, you want to kind of create a, um, uh, you want to set up your job with a high resolution. But let's let's make a custom brush. Uh, let's come in and go with the clip art. Let's go to decorative. Let's go down to, I'll just grab this Florida leaf and throw it on the board here. There we go, and let's grab, I don't know, what I want to grab next, guys, let's see, uh, now I could, in Aspire, I can create my own models and things, uh, you know, I could, uh, you know, create shapes and sculpt them and stuff up. This is just a quick and dirty example. Okay, let me get that centered here. Okay, let's go out of here. All right, let's say that this shape right here was my custom brush that I wanted and stuff. I can take those two items, bake them together as one item I can turn off my other 
models, what have you, and have that selected. And I can export that as 3D clip art. Okay, export as 3D clip art. And where I want to put it is inside my sculpting brushes folder. So I'll just call this my sample uh, Fleur Delise and hit save. Now that's one of my brushes and stuff in there. And if I had my, let's turn that off and turn my little board back on and stuff. Let's go into sculpting. Let's come in here and use a custom brush and go down to the sample floor de lease. Okay. Now notice you see it grabbed everything that was in that model. Even though that I had them turned off, it grabbed everything. So when I put this in, it's going to put all three of those shapes in there. We don't want that, right? So let's go back. Uh, let's discard that and uh, hit cancel. And we cannot have these other components when we're creating a sculpting brush. So let's go ahead and uh, we're going to select this one, this one, this and this. Let's delete that. All right, let's turn that back on and model export as 3D clip art. Go back to my sample floor to leaf and save and replace it. Let's go back in here and uh, get a sample on the board. Cool beans. All right. Once again, with that selected, go into 3D view, turn on the sculpting. It's going to be an add. I can add or subtract that shape from the items. I want to add this in. I want to use a sculpting brush. Uh, we'll use my sample fleur de leaf there. And I can adjust the size of it. I can adjust the strength of it. But I can now go through and start, you know, stamping out textures. I can actually kind of go through and I don't know what I'm creating there, but you know, if I smear it, it's smearing that shape, right? So this would be great for like gravel or rocky edges. It wouldn't be that shape, right? You know, you kind of gravel or rocky edges for mountains and things like that. But with this, you know, I'm most likely making a pattern and I want to, you know, stamp that in. But with that custom brush, I can stamp that in and create that texture. And man, that just opens up so many doors for like if I want to make a kind of a faux wood log or I want to make a faux wood frame or if I want to, you know, make some fake mountains or if I want to do this or do that or I want to put a nice cool texture on the board with some grass or some footprints running along the beach, whatever the case may be, I can now do that and I can use my mouse like a brush where I can stamp these things in, you know, and I can stamp you know, to uh, build them up, uh, whatever they may be. I love this feature. This now brings me more closer, much, uh, is more closer, uh, is that a word? Closer, this now brings me closer to my ZBrush. When I'm sculpting my models and stuff in ZBrush and I have my custom brushes, you know, my custom, you know, feather type brushes, my custom, you know, shape builders and things like that. Now I can do that in Aspire. Oh man, game has changed for me so much with modeling and be able to create models and stuff. So this is what I like. Um, that's one of the features that I really love that they added to the sculpting tool. And I also love the fact that they already gave me some preloaded brushes. Uh, let's, um, let's discard all of those uh, changes there. And that's the one thing I love. I can erase what I did. Let's load in some grass here and uh, you know I can start uh, throwing in some grass on my model 
you know, whatever it may be. Um, let's come in and throw in some clouds. Uh, let's turn those clouds 90 degrees. Let's come in here and throw in some clouds, whatever the case may be. And I could come in and load in some. Now they're seagulls. They're just, uh, they're cute. They're like off in the distance type seagulls uh, and everything where they're kind of like, uh, let's turn that uh, zero degrees, where they're like flying off into the distance, right? You know, uh, it's just that nice little V of the kind of the wingspan and stuff. Um, but uh, then, you know, I could build this up and then I could come in with my other models and shapes. Let's go back into our clip art and let's grab, let's grab a uh, animal. Let's see what I have here. Let's just throw a deer in there. And I could start building up that scenery. You kind of get the idea. You know, I could start building up that scene and things. It's it's really cool uh, that uh, we have that new feature and stuff. Uh, I love that. So I'm not going to harp too much on it. I just really want to show off the sculpting brushes. Uh, it just, uh, it's a big uh, uh, game changer for when you're creating shapes and you need a texture to that shape. Uh, you, you know, if I was creating the moon... You know, and I wanted to create those craters and stuff. I can create a brush that would create that crater type look. That crater type look could be something else. Like if I was creating mountains, I could actually use that stamp to create little caverns and and indentions in the mountain rock side, the face of the mountain and all that stuff. All kinds of neat stuff uh, there. Uh, so it really opens up a lot of door possibilities. All right, let's see what we've got here so far. Uh, yeah, Steve, let's not forget to do a thumbs up if you guys like this. <laughs> um, the, when it uh, comes to the modeling, a new feature, which I want to do a whole class by itself on this feature, um, when importing models and stuff where you can now segment those models uh, and cut them in parts and create them in uh, just like you're slicing these 3D models and stuff so I can build these 3D models. Let me see if I can import a 3D model and uh, let me see what would be A good example for this I think that is gonna be in my L drive no my D drive where D go I lost D okay D is down for right now so I can't use the D drive uh, let's see here dot uh, STL for my search to filter things out all right let's see what we got here find a sample that would be worthy of this all right bear with me a second guys let's go into my J drive and do that again at dot STL Baseball bat, uh, master seat. I'll just, let's bring in this rifle six here, just for a minute. This is gonna be an example. 
Okay. Now, one of the new things that I have uh, when in creating the uh, models in your import box on the left hand side, you're going to notice some changes. Uh, you're going to have, you've got different windows uh, and everything for size and position and all. Uh, you have the ability to, you know, I want to split this model down the middle uh, and I want to highlight my, let's zoom in here, uh, kind of highlight my undercuts and stuff that shows me where the bit's not going to be able to get to and stuff and that's going to help me decide where I need to slice this model. If I need to slice it, when we actually do a class on this and I bring in this incredible Hulk that I want to do, uh, it's going to be pretty cool. But um, if this model were, you know, uh, sit up on the side, uh, this purple area here is showing me my undercuts where the bit can't get to, right? So I might have to segment this model out into parts. And this is not a great example. Cars and buildings and things like that would be a great example, but I, I don't, I didn't have a file prepared for that. But um, uh, I can now segment, let's see, I'm gonna just, uh, I'm not gonna split this in half. I'm gonna segment this and let's go back to here. And now uh, let's change my size up. Let's go um, 12 inches on the Y. Oh, uh, let's go 15 here. Apply. Okay. And let me rotate that 90 degrees. Okay. So now I have this model and everything. And if I were to bring it in, let's bring it in with no segmenting or anything. Um, let's just uh, keep it just like it is uh, and everything. And I'm just going to import it in. Okay. And uh, let's see here. Is it gonna? Is it gonna make me segment it? It's gonna make me segment it. Okay. Um, I can now. I've got my plane here, so we are in a full 3D realm here, and I can change my segment pieces to slice this model up into slices. If you've ever wanted to do a very cool slice project, like a bear's face or a 3D shark or whatever the case may be. And you really didn't know how to use the uh, the slicing tool very effectively that you know is already in the uh, you know the software. Well, being able to segment this and this is Desktop Pro. It's not just Aspire. Okay, Desktop Pro and Aspire. When we're importing STLs, we now have the ability to segment our models out uh, and stuff. But now I can you know change how this model gets sliced uh, and uh, and everything. You know, I can cut off the sections and stuff, and I can, you know, segment that just that section, right? So that could be my first uh, kind of uh, part, if you will. Okay, so I got my segment one here, and then my other half is there, right? I've already cut that top off. So now I want to let's pull this up and let's take it right there and let's segment that. All right, to cut that lower half off. And so now I've got my three segments. Let's go ahead and import that in. Okay, and it's giving me my three slices. So I can, uh, you know, uh, move them around and position them on the board. Let's grab that uh, second, third segment here. And let's move that around a bit. But now I can, if my model had any undercuts or if it, if it created that uh, big, massive uh, massive bunch of material underneath where you know the arm you know it, the, it had to create that material and stuff I can now segment this thing into pieces so that when I carve it when it's finished carving I can reassemble all those pieces uh, you know after all the carving is done I could take those three pieces and reassemble them together uh, to create you know this three-dimensional statue part uh, whatever it may be this is a game changer because before the steps to be able to segment a model was atrocious. Um, we had to use a third party software like uh, I think it was uh, 3D Viewer or something. I forget what it was called. 
but uh, had to go in there and try to segment these pieces and, and hope we got them right. And then we had to, you know, import them in. And if I had, if I had uh, Desktop or Pro, I can only import one third-party model file. But before, when we were creating those individual segments, they were individual models, and I wouldn't have been able to import all of them in. I would have to have Aspire. Well, now, when I bring that model in, I can go ahead right here in Desktop Pro Aspire. I can segment that out and lay those parts out uh, to cut them all and then reassemble that 3D model, statue, building, whatever it is that I wanted to make, I can now do that. I love this feature. Uh, I don't know if I love it as much as the new custom brushes, but uh, I love this feature because I have been, I've got this incredible Hulk model that uh, it's a 3D print model. So now, you know, in 3D printing, you know, they have these models, if any of you are familiar with, I'm not 100% familiar with 3D printing, that's not my wheelhouse at all. But they, you know, they have on the 3D printing, they're creating supports, you know, uh, in there that kind of support, you know, where uh, it has to create like a bridge or what have you for these parts and everything. Or they slice it up and stuff and all. And then you can, you can glue together the parts and all. Well, it's the same thing here. Now, if I have a statue like my Incredible Hulk statue, I can segment these parts out so that I don't get those undercuts anymore. And uh, when all the parts are carved, I can assemble and glue this into this badass hole, you know, and things like that. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, uh, that's gonna be one of our classes uh, and, uh, and everything, it's gonna be fun. But this feature, being able to segment your models and stuff, uh, that is uh, part of Desktop Pro and Aspire and stuff. The multi-sheet layout and everything. Now let's talk about the final thing, which is REST machining, which is available in Desktop Pro and Aspire. It used to only be a feature for Aspire, and there was a few hoops you had to jump through to be able to do the REST machining. Let's talk about what REST machining is to begin with. Let's go ahead and delete these segments. And let's go into um, my clip art. And let's grab, I don't know, let's grab what do I want to grab. I want something with a little bit of detail. Do, do, do. I will bring this in. All right, let's size it up. Okay, now before we get, when we create a 3D finished toolpath, one ball nose bit, you know, it's either gonna be the eighth inch, the 16th, the 32nd, whatever the case may be. Now some of you in 10.5 and stuff like that, you're already familiar with rest machining. What do I mean by that? Well, have you, did you notice that in your 10.5 and stuff like that, when you're creating a pocket toolpath, um, Let's, uh, first of all, let me change my uh, 1.5. Had to change my model size for a minute. But uh, when you're creating your pocket tool pass and stuff, did you notice that you can add more than one tool in your pocket tool path? Uh, you can add one, two, three, four, ten 10 tools, whatever you want. That's rest machining. The bigger bit is going to do all the area that it can fit in in the larger areas. Then the littler bit is gonna go where the big bit couldn't fit doing the rest of the design. And the small, the next bit's doing even more that the other bit couldn't fit in. That is rest machining, where we have multiple tools carving multiple areas to end up with a finished piece. And we've already seen rest machining in our pocket cut tool pass, in our V-carve uh, clearance tool pass, where we can add multiple tools in our list and everything. We've already kind of been uh, teased with that a bit. But when it came to 3D model uh, finishing, we didn't have that feature. When we were doing a 3D model toolpath, we only could choose one ball nose bit. And we had to choose the smaller one. And that made our run times much bigger uh, in things. Well, now we can add in multiple tools. So I could come in here and in my... Um, Tool set. Let's go to my 
Bear with me a minute. I haven't set up my tool set yet. Okay, let me grab my eighth inch. Oops, hold on, I gotta hit apply. My tapered ball nose, let's copy that over. You gotta set up your new tool database. I haven't set up my tool database yet. I just got my version 11 a few hours ago. Uh, click apply and go down to that'll be it all right let's grab first of all let's grab our eighth inch tapered ball nose let's copy that one over that'll be our first tool and now let's select the rest machining tool uh, that'll be my 16th inch tapered ball nose. Okay, so now my eighth inch ball nose is going to do a majority of the work. And then it's going to, my 16th inch is going to come in and uh, uh, do the less. So you're going to notice in your 3D finish tool pass now, you're going to notice that you have a rest machining area. The minimal detail, uh, you can have fine or coarse, uh, you know, on the minimum detail and stuff, uh, you know. Uh, I want to find detail on mine, so I'm going to slide my bar over a little bit to find and stuff. I can do a boundary offset, uh, like if I want to stay away from the lines and stuff, just like we could do a boundary offset for our main tools and all. Um, the one thing that uh, I like, let's go with our model as the boundary here, no boundary offset. The rest machining will do minimal detail I want, minimum detail I want, somewhat fine. So I'll go, maybe not that fine. Let's go, uh, I'm just gonna go center line there, 1,000th of an inch. I wanna do a raster cut back and forth and I can go ahead and uh, calculate that see how long that takes to calculate. And so it's gonna calculate the uh, bit for the larger area and then the smaller area. Now there's an additional feature to this where we can, where our smaller bit doesn't go back over and cut the larger area that, that was already done with the eighth inch bit and stuff. Um, that feature I haven't played around with yet. When we get a little bit more, uh, you know, next week's class and all, when we start doing some modeling and everything, or what have you, we'll uh, we'll look at that uh, that feature and all. I believe uh, I would have to uh, select some additional vectors and stuff, uh, or it might play in the role of the uh, boundary offset and everything. This is almost done calculating, and boom. Now before, before this, it wasn't just this simple. I had to, I would have to create a tool path with my eighth inch bit, exported a copy of that carved preview, mirrored that copy, traced it with the trace tool to just to create the vectors so I can select those vectors and have that smaller bit do the areas within those vectors. Lots of steps to do in the rest machining and stuff. Well, I guess it by popular demand, and I never thought I would see it in desktop and pro and I'm so glad they decided, hey, you know what? This is going across the board, right? So that's that was excellent um, that they did that, uh, that they, they allowed rest machining to be a feature of all the software because now I can use my bigger bit to do a majority of the work and then those detail areas where that bigger bit can't fit that I'd have tool marks left over or, you know, just because I didn't want my runtime to be, you know, forever, I just dealt with it, you know, and did some sanding and clean up. I don't have to do that now. Now I can handle the uh, tool pass with multiple tools and uh, get the finish that I want in my project. I really love that. Um, it is, uh, it's super, super intuitive. So right now, uh, it's going uh, over the final pass for the 16th inch tapered ball nose. Uh, and everything so we'll give that a second to uh, finish up calculating and and we'll look at that but let's see what do we got here uh, all right
right, Brooks Martin. Okay, yeah, so um, Brooks, you were the one, I think, in the beginning that asked, were you, were you the one that asked about uh, rest machining? Let me go back up to the top here. Give me a moment. Brooks, was that you that asked about, somebody asked about rest machining. There we go, yeah, it was Bruce, Bruce, Bruce. Um, uh, I, I don't, yeah, sorry, Bruce. Uh, so rest machining basically is a, a process where we have a larger bit cover a majority of the area to minimize kind of our runtime. Our larger bit can go and carve and then we have either multiple smaller other bits or we have one other bit or whatever that comes back and does our detail work, does the rest of the design. And before there was a lot of hoops we had to jump through to get that rest machining toolpath, but it was capable, we were capable of doing it in Aspire because in Aspire we can export a model and we can create a model from a toolpath preview, we can create a model from you know, uh, you know, know, creating one you know, from scratch and stuff and we could save those. You can't save model files. You can't export them out as clip art or anything in VCarve Desktop and Pro. Um, so we couldn't do rest machining in those two programs. We could only do it in Aspire because we had to export a uh, and create a model from a toolpath preview. We had to then reverse that preview, trace it, and then create another finishing toolpath. We called it the rest machining toolpath with a smaller bit that did all the vectors and the traced area and everything. All that now is done with, it's just like our pocket cuts, our V-carve and all, where we can add multiple tools. So we have our 3D Finish 1 uh, that will come in and let's preview that visible toolpath. Our 3D Finish 1 with our eighth inch ball nose bit is gonna come in and do a majority of the work and everything. And if we zoom into this, um, where the uh, ball nose bit couldn't fit, we would have some tool marks and things so our uh, second bit, which is our 16th of an inch end mill, uh, we can preview those visible toolbaths and they're gonna come back and clean up all those edge details around our letters and all where the big bit couldn't fit. I think that was way too fast. Let's uh, reset that and do it. Let's do it a little slower. Let's get the, um, this one fast here. That horse hair looks funky. I'd go in and smooth all that out, but um, and uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. all right, we'll finish up there, buddy. Okay, and on our edges, uh, and again, it's pixelated because I'm in a low resolution right now for speed sake. But uh, you know our edges and everything where the bit couldn't fit around our letters, uh, and again it's pixelated. I I guess I need to turn the preview up so you guys can see. Let me turn the simulation quality up, and bear with me. Let me see if we can kind of get a little bit better view. It's hard to see if you can't see if it's all pixelated. But um, good evening, Elmo. I didn't see you pop in there earlier, Elmo. How you doing, bud, from the UK? Hope things are going well. Okay. Oops. Lost my soda there. All right. Uh, Carl, I'm using Pro 10.5. Thinking about going to Aspire 11. Do you merge the two together to get the tool database to Aspire? Or should you keep them as separate programs? Well, eventually... When you upgrade to Aspire, eventually your Pro is gonna fall off. It's not gonna be valid anymore to use. Uh, when you upgrade and everything, when you load that, it's going to ask you if you wanna merge your post processors and your tool database over from the version of the software that's already on your computer. In this case, for you, it'd be version 10.5 of your VCart Pro. So those will transfer over. Um, 
if you've got a custom tool database and everything, uh, then you may not want to do the auto configuration, which loads the tool database and stuff like that uh, for a particular machine, because that could overwrite your existing tool path, your tool database uh, and everything. Um, I do not believe that it would merge over, but it asks you right at the beginning of the installation, do you want to merge over your post processors, your uh, tool database and everything from Pro 10.5? You're gonna click yes to merge and that'll bring all that stuff over, uh, Carl. And and there are, you know, you're gonna get a full installation of Aspire 11. You're still gonna see that VCard Pro on your computer, but eventually that's gonna fall off and the license is gonna go invalid and and everything. Um, uh, uh, when the time, when, you know, time runs out and everything because you are moving up to uh, Pro and stuff. Alrighty, alrighty. Aphrodite, let's get going there. We're almost there on that preview. Uh, let's see here. Um, how does the merge work in the sculpting brush? Uh, basically, it merges all of those, uh, you know, things. It merges those in with your uh, model um, instead of being like an add. Kind of thing it's just like your how you combine models how you add merge and all that stuff it merges those uh, together uh, and everything um, we'll go back to that and I'll show you that in just a second uh, let's see here it would be nice if Vetric had the highest resolution automatic when you open a project always forget to hit the shift key yeah um, you know those features are very rarely used unless you're actually building models or sculpting models and everything because if I use the extremely high uh, and uh, maximum in VCarve Desktop or Pro um, you know I'm I'm bringing in you know I'm creating a certain resolution and all but the model that I'm importing I can't change the resolution of that model if I bought a low resolution model or a medium resolution model or what have you, I can't change that, right? Uh, so generally, you're really using those uh, two features when you're uh, building a model from scratch or whatever and you wanna build these components up because you can't change the quality of a model. Um, so having to hold the shift key to get those two additional features, that's just, you know, it's a step you have to take. And I know, yeah, I've done that. I've gotten into, you know, I've made like three or four components in a model and I'd go to zoom in to look at it and all and it'd be really pixelated. And it's like, oh, I forgot to change my setup to extremely because I was in a hurry or whatever. And so got to go, can't go back and change it. You got to start over uh, and everything. So it just, it is what it is. And yeah, it would be nice to be a feature, but um, it would, uh, it would be a, uh, you know, a, uh, it would be nice to uh, have that. Now, one of the things that I was hoping that I would see in 11 that I don't see that I am going to make a note uh, to tell Vetric is an auto save. That's the one thing that I would love to see is an auto save, uh, you know, so I could set the increments or whatever to, you know, auto save my progress. Uh, automatically because every time I forget sometimes I forget to hit the save button and power goes out or something happens or crash or whatever uh, I'd love to see an auto save feature so um, that's gonna be my next request alright so uh, with this uh, preview I'm gonna go ahead and hit uh, stop here uh, and it's gone far enough to show what I want to show so there is a little red button at the bottom you can stop the tool bath but as we look here and everything, uh, our tool marks, it's hard to see them uh, still, but there's uh, tool marks around our letters and all uh, where the uh, larger bit could not really get into and everything. So that smaller bit, I'm gonna turn the speed down just a little bit on this one and preview that tool path. And so what you should be able to see as it moves along maybe they want to slow down that much it's 
especially kind of focus your attention in the screen here where that bit's moving along there. It's coming along. Um, you'll see it pop up in a second. So right here on the B, you can see uh, that smaller bit's able to get into those detail areas. You'll see that tool being drawn there. And it'll be able to go in there and clean those areas up. That is rest machining. That's where that, you know, uh, goes back and does the rest design that the bigger bit couldn't fit in. And this is going to be a game changer. Let's go ahead and stop this here uh, because uh, let's look and see you know is another feature to that uh, rest machining where I can choose to oh I froze stand by I've lost my data Okay. All right. All right. So we uh we lost a little bit of uh, uh internet there for a minute and uh totally dropped off. Um You must read. Okay. Interesting enough. Okay, sorry about that, folks. We lost a little bit of uh, uh, data here, and so we got things kind of jumped around. You're going to see me be a little bit jumpy. Uh, my computer is sending data faster than real time uh, so I don't know how it's possible to send data faster than real time but uh, I, I think don't if you're sending it that wouldn't that be real time <laughs> it's sending faster in real time um, the uh, so you might see me jump a little bit uh, in the uh, in the screen and my voice and everything I can't hear uh, the um, audio so I don't know if the audio is jump or not when, when I see myself jump in the screen like I'm catching up to something <laughs> but uh, anyway what I was saying before we were interrupted uh, and here we go again it's about to do it again no data so let me see if I can reset that Okay. All right. So what I was saying before we were disconnected and everything 
was that in REST machining, there's another feature uh, where we could uh, have our uh, bit kind of stay away from the area that's already been carved and just go back and touch up those areas. I've got to do a little bit more research on that, uh, how that function uh, is utilized, if I have to draw vectors and stuff like before or what have you. Uh, but uh, Vetric does a really great job in explaining the rest machining process. Uh, and um, Becky, I think it's Becky that's uh, doing the video uh, in that what's new in version 11. She does a really great job of explaining that. So definitely if you haven't checked out that video, check it out because she kind of goes into a lot of detail on all the features and all. But that's kind of my brief highlight. Uh, uh, right now um, when it comes to the custom brushes when it comes to the sculpting and things let's talk about I'll just give you a kind of a list of uh, or what what things have changed in um, uh, the different software let's start off with um, Vetric VCarve desktop and uh, oops bear with me a second Okay, so in desktop, just like Desktop Pro and Aspire, the multi-sheet support, meaning that we can now uh, organize our work on multiple sheets that we're going to be cutting, you know, different thickness materials and stuff like that, where we can set up those multiple sheets. That's across the board. X, Y, and Z, uh, meaning when I say X, Y, and Z, uh, Desktop Pro and Aspire, uh, it's across the board. Uh, the 3D Rest Machining. Uh, allows us to optimize our toolpath times and our toolpaths so we can remove material uh, and get a nice more a lot more detail and clean up and things uh, by using multiple bits. That's across the board, Desktop Pro and Aspire. Um, rest machining was kind of introduced uh, to all of us with our pocket toolpaths, our V-carve toolpaths, our clearance tool where we could add multiple tools in. Uh, larger and smaller tools uh, so they can get those tighter areas. That's rest machining. So we already kind of got a taste for that, but now doing being able to do rest machining with our 3D modeling tool pass, that's across the board, Desktop Pro and Aspire. Love that. Um, the 3D rough cut uh, to avoid uh, machine areas. Uh, so the 3D raster cut strategy uh, has the option to avoid already machine areas. That's what I was talking about uh, let's go back to that on the rough cut here uh, in our rough cut toolpath when we are uh, carving we can check the box let me create a let me get a model on here clip art I'll just throw this alligator on here okay um, when it comes to uh, you know creating a cut, we have the ability to avoid already machined areas. Uh, so if those areas have already been machined uh, by another cut or what have you, uh, then the, uh, that cutting strategy is gonna ignore those. It's gonna avoid them or stay away from them so that uh, it, uh, it, you know, it doesn't run into it. And that may tie into um, and, and why it's there. I'm going to have to get a little bit deeper in that. That's my deep dive for this evening that I'm going to get into and, and see so I can kind of explain that in a better scenario. Um, again, Becky does a great job in the Vectric videos on explaining that. But the importing the models, STL, you know, or third-party model files and being able to uh, create our slices, our variable slices and everything, you know, right upon import, uh, that's a big deal. That is a whole class by itself because I want to do my Incredible Hope model. I've been waiting. That's one project I've been waiting to kind of do a class on, but I really, it was just too much of a nightmare to do. Uh, you know, even with slicing, uh, it's still the model wouldn't import properly for me to even use the slice tool uh, and everything because of all the undercut stuff and all uh, now I can do that and so that's a class I'm looking forward to doing with you guys but those those four things multiple sheet 3d rest machining 3d roughing strategy to avoid machine areas 
and uh, variable thickness relief. Uh, that's the, you know on our uh, our 3D cuts that we can import. That's across the board for everybody. Um, the let's go to my next note here in uh, VCar Pro. Um, it's pretty much going to be those uh, same features. You're also, when it comes to uh, all the software as well, that resize where we can resize individual items as it, we can select them all and resize them all at once individually. That's across the board as well. Uh, in our text box, let's go over here real quick. It was another 2D feature that I didn't share with you guys. But um, in our text and everything, we now have the ability to uh, do spell check, right? And we can add uh, words uh, that you know would get flagged. Uh, we can add them to the dictionary, right? You know, to our dictionary and stuff, so they don't get flagged in the future and all. So um, if there is a, let's see here, V E C T. R E C. That's not how you spell Vetric. We know that. Um, if you notice in the software here, make sure I didn't freeze up on you guys. You notice here that uh, it is a red line underneath in the top right corner of my text box here. It's kind of a red line that is pointing out to me that that word is spelled wrong. Okay, and. Uh, in uh, you know Vetric here, even the word spelled correctly, Vetric spelled correctly, uh, I'm still getting a flag that it's wrong here. And so on the spell checker, I can add, it'll give me some options, right? It'll give me options, electric and all that stuff, but I can add that word to the library so it won't flag that word again, unless it's misspelled. But now it'll be in there. So now we have a spell checker in the text box, so that's great. Um, but, uh, all right, did we get that audio and all that stuff? Are we back and clear again? But, um, uh, so now we have that spell checker. So if I'm ever typing out a phrase, um, you know, welcome to, our home. Or what have you I put a capital letter in home h-o-m-e even though it's spelled correctly I've got two capital letters <coughs> excuse me uh, my HMIO so the software flag that is an issue right it's got a red line underneath it so when I go down to my spell checker it gives me all my options and everything and I just want you know the regular h-o-m-e right I can quickly do that uh, R uh, if I go into my spell checker you know, it's giving me options and stuff, and I want R O U R, not O U R E. So I love that we have a spell checker now. We haven't never had that before, and sometimes that was a pain in the butt, especially after you go so far. You create the toolpath, you do your carving, and somebody reads it other than you, and they're like, "Oh man, that's a beautiful sign," but uh, isn't that supposed to be spelled this way? And you look and go, "Ah, oh, shoot." Can't really sell that sign. Or you got to discount the sign and all that stuff. <laughs> so uh, it's a great feature. Yes, there has been changes in the chamfer tool. Um, the uh, we can now with our tools and everything in the chamfer tool. Uh, again, I haven't had the chance to play with all tools, but uh, we can have uh, we can set it to where we have an overcut so that our tip of our bit doesn't uh, touch our chamfer and all. And uh, what I'm going to do is I would add, uh, uh, I would advise that you watch the What's New in Vetric 11, V11 that Betsy put out where she talks about the chamfer tool and everything because I haven't had a chance to create anything with a chamfer on it yet to uh, see how it works. But basically, it keeps the tip of our tool from, uh, you know, uh, cutting the end of our end of our piece so it uh, we have what's called an overcut so we can overcut that chamfer so it doesn't run into our where that chamfer is starting and finishing 
uh, where it'll overcut, uh, where it doesn't cut into our part, you know, where the chamfer starts and stuff, uh, or where the chamfer stops at the end of the at the bottom of the chamfer. Uh, and so uh, the utilization of that, um, you know, uh, we'll create when we do our class upcoming classes. I'll have projects with chamfers and stuff in it, and I'll show you that. But yes, so we now have that new overcut feature and stuff in the chamfer toolpath. You know, the um, uh, the I mean, there's so many things. Uh, Two-sided projects, two-sided projects. You know, we can now swap sides. How many times have you ever uh, laid out a project, a two-sided project, and you drew things, uh, you know, on one side, not realizing what side you're on? You draw things on the other, and you realize that this your top stuff is on the bottom side, and the bottom stuff is on the top side. So you you know you just kind of rename the tool pass you know top and bottom or whatever side one and side two well if you screw up like that now you can just click a button to switch sides it'll throw the vectors that are on the bottom to the top and the top vectors down to the bottom it switches sides love that feature because uh, i've done that many times i've done that in classes where we create things and uh you know you got side one side two um the uh text uh kerning uh, you know your your whole line uh, you can now let's do that I've got a whole line here let's close this for a minute on the let's go back over here when we're using our edit text space and curving tool we can now reduce uh, you know you can reduce between your letters like you normally do uh, but you can also um, you know reduce the whole the spacing and even out the spacing on the whole line let me undo that so you can see here uh, as I'm up here you see my VA has a line underneath it uh, the little black VNA has a line underneath it I mean when I click um, if I hold down my alternate key it's going to do the whole line at once uh, and everything and kind of give me some equal spacing and stuff um, you can um, hold the alt key uh, to do the whole line or your shift and alt key if you hold your shift and alt key um, this uh, will increase right so increase or decrease so if I had uh, shift and alt and I come in here you know I can increase that whole line so without the shift key you just hold your alt key and it does the whole line instead of the individual letters to reduce it down or up so a new little function in the text tool, the the um, the text tool. Um, we can uh, in our three D roughing, we can change the raster angle now instead of just uh, X or Y. We can do thirty degree rastering angles. We can do ten degree rastering angles and all that stuff. And it's not just raster along the X or raster along the Y. We can raster diagonally. Love that. Um, we have, uh, you know, our pocket rest machining. We talked about a moment ago. You know, that was kind of always there, but they've made some enhancements to that uh, with the tools to avoid, again, avoid machined cutting areas. Um, the overcut, which is the overcut that the overlap on the chamfer, that tool, um, it basically just allows you to. Uh, use the side of the tool to make your cut and that tool uh, won't you know run into your material on the top or the bottom and all uh, there's changes for the molding tool pass uh, you know vector selection you can now do multiple vectors and stuff in the molding tool path all of these things we're not going to get over them all tonight but these are just some highlights and we're going to start covering these in actual designs uh, in the upcoming you know classes and stuff so you're gonna see these new features being used uh, in upcoming classes and everything um, the ramping has been changed on all end mills uh, you know delete empty layers that is great in itself my goodness gracious let's imagine that you know we've had a bunch of layers created and you know uh, we've moved things around and we've got a bunch of empty layers in there we can now right click and delete either that layer, the visible layer, the invisible layer, or empty any empty layer. We can just delete them and it clears out and cleans up our uh, layers tab. I love that feature. 
Um, just, uh, you know, it just cleans up that mess, you know, and keeps things you know, limited because if I've created multiple layers and I've, I've pulled layers from vectors from one layer to another and I end up with an empty layer, you know, and stuff and I end up uh, over time multiple empty layers, I can just one click delete them all, you know, get rid of them. So that's a great, nice little feature and stuff. Um, and uh, so, you know, with the um, text tools and stuff like that, the changes and our lines and our sizing and everything it's wonderful the last thing that I will say on this the last thing I will show and demonstrate is let's close out of this tool and let's delete this welcome to our home spell check thing let's grab this little alligator here and let's uh, draw a circle around him Okay, and let's uh, come in here and hold down the control key and let's uh, drag out multiple copies of this. I'm just dragging them randomly anywhere right now. Okay, now nesting, when we're doing nesting, uh, you know, that's where we're nesting multiple parts onto a sheet to minimize our waste maximize the yield of that material. Before, when we were using the nesting toolpath, we could only nest the vectors. It would ignore any models or things. And if I had a model, if I was making these little medallions or what have you, where I have a model inside my vectors, I, you know, rather than you just nesting the vectors and leaving the models, uh, you know, where I have to drop them and place them individually and stuff in there, now, when we nest, it's going to nest the vector and the model. So if I were to select all of these items here, and let's say that I'm going to be using a uh, eighth inch end mill to cut them out or what have you, uh, let's put a clearance of a quarter inch, whoops, too many decimal points, quarter inch clearance and all. Um, I can, I don't mind rotating the part for best fit. That's fine. I'll rotate that. Um, I will uh, not mirror the parts. I will not allow parts inside of other parts. That's great. And let's merge. Uh, I don't necessarily need to make multiple copies. I already have the multiple copies there. Nesting sheets, I can customize the nesting sheets now, right? Uh, and all that stuff, but I'll just use the active. We can preview that um, and, uh, and everything. And when it nests the parts, it's gonna nest the parts with the models in them. They're upside down, but doesn't matter. Um, that's just how it spun them around uh, in increments and everything from the fit, but the components went with it, you know? So that's a great thing, especially for you little jewelry makers, medallion makers, or whatever, you know, uh, where you have parts with models in the middle. Uh, now, when you're nesting to try to minimize your waste and stuff, it's gonna, you know, keep those parts together. So that's a cool thing. A uh, lot of new things, man. If you have not upgraded to version 11 and you've been on the fence about it, nah, this is the time. This, the changes and the additions and the features. I mean, if you take back all the way, you know, I started with um, 7.5 or 8. And uh, the massive changes that have taken, you know, gradual, uh, gradual steps, you know, through all the versions and everything, all the way up to now, version 11 blows away, blows away all the other changes and stuff. Uh, I mean, I love the other changes, don't get me wrong, but man, for what they, the, the, the bang for your buck, the features and the new functions and everything that you get, it's a game, man, it's making Vetric just awesome. I can see myself doing a lot more sculpting and stuff uh, for my basic models and things in here rather than turning to my ZBrush and stuff where I have my, you know, special tools and stuff. I now have stamping brushes and and uh, you know, uh, and things that I can I can create custom brushes and stuff and all that for textures and all. 
I can see me doing a lot more sculpting in Aspire than turning to a third party like my ZBrush and stuff. I'm still not gonna stop using my ZBrush, but um, uh, being able to do it all in-house in Vetric, it's a, it's a game changer. Uh, with all the nice enhancements to the drawing tools, uh, you know, like the line tool or our size tool and things like that, um, these little things, they mean a lot, especially when you're designing and, and everything. So I'm really happy to see that Patrick did that. Guys, this discussion is going to get, uh, you know, um, there's more, there's so much more to talk about and actually show off and do. And we're going to do this in a project scenario, real life project scenario starting next week. Uh, we're going to kind of show some, you know, projects with these features incremented or, or implemented, incremented, implemented and stuff. Uh, so hopefully you look forward to those classes. I want to thank you for staying with me tonight. It's not going to, we're not, we're going to end it here. Um, uh, it's not going to be a, uh, a long night, but for more information on, uh, Vetric upgrades, uh, visit vetric.com forward slash upgrade, uh, pick your software and click on the button that says view the, uh, new V11 features read through and uh, look at those. Also, you can check out the videos, what's new in V11 and stuff. But if you're a reader and you like to be able to verbally read what some of the changes are, uh, vetric.com forward slash upgrade and uh, go in and click the button on each of whatever uh, version you have or whatever software you have and click the view what's new in version 11 and it'll give you a complete rundown and stuff. Um, I'm just, uh, uh, just super stoked uh, I'm happy about the rest machining. That's great, but I'm really happy about being able to import and segment my models. And that in itself is a class um, to how to use that segmenting tool and all appropriately. So when we do that class on Hulk and everything, that's going to be kind of a main lesson on how to choose your segments and, and, and stuff and all. So I hope you guys look forward to that class coming up. All right. Um, let's see here. Can we import several existing projects with new multiple sheets, Troy asks. So Troy, um, Troy's asking if we can, when we import, let's close out of this. When we are importing another file with a different sheet or what have you. Uh, let's see here, let me go to documents, CNC jobs. Design your first project, open that up and import that in. Some layers you're importing are invisible. Would you like to show them? I'll uh, say no for right now. And it's just importing that project, right? So it's not gonna import that project on its own sheet or anything like that. Uh, what I would do is at this point, I would go into sheets. I would add a new sheet and uh, that project was, um, I forget what size it was, but uh, I would create my sheet. So let's edit it. And I believe it was 11 inches wide by seven and a quarter inches tall. No, it was bigger than that. Um, click OK and on that sheet I would move back over to my sheet one okay make that my active sheet I would select my vectors and I can move them to a sheet sheet two I can move them over let's make sheet two active okay toggle to that and then I can select uh, my vectors again and get them centered onto the material and stuff. 
And so, you know, I could bring that in that way, but it's not going to import uh, those uh, individual sheets and stuff. Now, that may vary from when I'm bringing in a template uh, because with my multiple sheets, I can export those uh, as a uh, template. I can save them as a template and everything, and I could save those multiple sheets and stuff. That's a little bit different. Again, we'll get into that, but no, as far as uh, what you're thinking, Troy, if we import several existing projects, is it going to import all those individual sheets for those projects? No, it won't. No, nope. it won't. You have to create that sheet and then move your project onto that sheet. Now I have two separate sheets, but I have to. I had to create it uh, in my sheet layer. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, what do you do when there's a problem with a feature or with a feature or having an issue with it? Uh, Kool Aid. Uh, if you're having a problem with an issue, then you're definitely, you know, if it's a new feature and stuff, um, you're definitely going to want to reach out to support at vetric.com uh, via email and uh, maybe take some screenshots of that feature or, you know, give a good description of what's going on or what have you. Because they periodically, you know, especially with new release, you're going to see these iterations, 11, right now we're at 11.003, you're gonna see 11.005, 11.124, 11.3, you know, these things. And these are gonna be patch repairs. As these repairs, or as these issues or bugs or glitches or whatever are brought to their attention, and it's always good to bring it to their attention, support at vetric.com, because they will go through and fix those uh, issues and stuff, and they will put them out in a, a release across the board to everybody and everything so that's going to be the best way to handle that kool-aid is uh you know vetric at support uh support at vetric.com and uh make them aware of the issue that you're having um if you're a digital woodcarver customer you can always call me and we can look at it just to make sure you're using the feature correctly uh and stuff and uh you know if you aren't uh, then i can you know show you the correct way to use it if you are then it's a glitch or a bug or something then you know you bring it to Vetric's attention because so they can fix it, right? Because it's a new release. There's going to be some quirky things going on, and there's going to be you know things that uh, you know people will find. And if they don't bring it to Vetric's attention, Vetric can't put out that patch repair and fix it. So that would be the best way to go there. Uh, let's see here. Yep. All right. So that ends the questions. All right, everybody, so hopefully this little overview is just a discussion. Like I said, I'm new to it just like you. Uh, I've had a few hours to play with it today. Love the new features that I've played with so far and everything. Uh, now it's time for me to really uh, put my uh, nose into it and uh, start uh, doing some designing and uh, just really running it through the paces and stuff so that I could teach you some of the new cool things. And also what I like to do is uh, when these new features and all stuff come out, I like to be able to kind of, you know, talk about, you know, quick tips and pro tips and shortcuts and, um, you know, everything. So I want to really learn all the ins and outs and all. And uh, we'll start uh, kind of playing with some of these new features next week and next week's class. And until then, thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you soon. Last question before I run off. Can we uh, get the new version and keep the older one? No, when you update, uh, when you update, eventually your older version is going to uh, kind of fall out. Uh, you know, it might be weeks, months, year, but eventually it's going to, uh, because you're updating and everything, so it, you know, it doesn't backtrack and stuff. Um, but uh, you know, for a short period of time, you'll have version 11 and version 10.5, and you can open 10.5 and you can work in it and all that stuff. And everything uh, and then you got your version 11 but eventually that's gonna kind of uh, drop off uh, you know over the months or years all right everybody um, yeah and uh, Michael's uh, Michael's answering you saying that yes each is its own version and that's true each is its own version but eventually um, you know if I'm upgrading from vcar pro 10.5 to vcar 11 um, eventually my license and everything for 10.5 is gonna be no more right and all that stuff so it'll be uh and all that but um it could again be weeks months year uh if i look back at my software really quick last thing i know you guys got me into this uh let's see here uh i've got my 
Aspire all the way back to version 10, right? So I can still open version 10 because it's, you know, it's whole thing. And uh, it's telling me that 10.514 is updated and all, but I can still draw on that. It's still on my computer uh, and things and all. But eventually, uh, I'm going to get a, a message here saying that, uh, you know, the you know license is expiring or, or you know it's being outdated and who knows you know I've had version 10 since what when did 10 come out last year year before last so yeah you know like Mike says it's there it's on your computer but you know eventually it's gonna go away thing that sucks is going back and forth back and forth because all the software all the programs you open you you know in version 11 if you get used to the features and you go back here and those features aren't there you know, you're kind of you're doing yourself a disservice by jumping back and forth, but some people have reasons to do that. All right, guys, you have a great night. See ya.